Hello. Good day. It's Jason Curtis speaking from South Africa to do an interview with Ian. Yeah, this is Ian. Hello, Ian. Jason here. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Good, good. Are you all set? Yeah. Excellent. Well, congratulations. Oh, uh, well, on the record or Liverpool football? <laughs> I think it's a combination of both, but uh, yeah. um, I must admit I've been a fan of your music for, for, I think, far too many years than I think most people would admit to. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's nice to hear anyway, even though obviously we can't admit how long we've both been fans, but... Um, Oh, that, that's lovely to hear, especially from such a, a fairly far-flung place, you know. Yes. Um, were you from over here? Um, originally, yes. Uh, yeah. Originally from Kent. When, how long have you been in South Africa? Um, good deal of my life, but pretty much most yeah. of my life, yeah. But uh, my, my folks... You've got, you, mm -hmm. you've got a kind of combination accent, it's not... It's not no, it's a, totally it's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> That was good. Yeah. I was very distinguished. Thank you. <laughs> but congratulations on Flowers. Um, I was uh, very eager to get my hands on it. I've been listening to it for about the last two weeks. Oh, and yeah. um, and I, must, I must admit, not to say that uh, um, you've ever sounded uh, not good, um, but this is Echo and the Bunnymen, I think, as, um, as everyone fondly remembers, but also, um, I think, as... Uh, it has the commercial potential to to hopefully get you right up to where you where you deserve to be. No, oh, that's, that's nice. To, I mean, it's funny that is the, the recurring kind of reaction I think from from fans, uh, germans. I mean, I've spoken to more germans to be honest than, mm. than fans over the last few months, mm. just because I've been doing lots of promo. Mm. And the, the recurring reaction is that it reminds them of in Japan for instance which is when I started the promo right um, well I mean, remember one of them saying this is why I'm only fast for hard I call it the bunny man <laughs> this, uh, did you understand that that was my Japanese impression it was very good <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's kind of nice to hear that you know because it's funny when you're so close to it and the, I always hoped that the bunny man had more than one sound I mean mm. that, that was our intention from the off you know to mm. not and not kind of be trapped into this, into an, a, a debut album sound like Crocodiles. That's why Heaven yeah. it became something else, mm. and then Paul, you find something else again. Mm. But, but it is nice to know that after 20, how long? 22? Been, let's call it 20 years. Yes, let's. Um, mm. That we've still got the, um, that Scouse mm. wherewithal. Mm. And Scouse burning kind of desire not to. Basically, there's a there's a line on one of the songs, "Buried the Live," which I, I kind of nicked from Dylan Thomas. Mm. Mm. He's not doing anything with it at the moment. No, and it's it's the rage, rage against the dying of the light kind of uh -huh. concept, you know. Uh -huh. And I do think, I think um, that's how we've always approached. The bunny man, you know, we've never, we didn't come in with crocodiles to say, look, we're a, we're a teenage rock and roll band. No, you know, no. It was obvious from that album that we were like music that was kind of intelligent and, and, and matures. It's a crap word to use when mm. it comes to, to music, but kind of a reflective, intelligent kind of mm. take on rock and roll. Yeah. And, uh, and I think by beginning with that, we have aged probably better than any of those groups. Mm, to the, um, yeah, to the point that you can do what you're doing now, yeah. Mm. Yeah, mm. you know, and it's also, I haven't turned into um, some baldy, <laughs> ugly bastard. No. Uh, if I can say <laughs> ugly on... Is this a radio thing? No, no, don't worry, it's going into oh, print. Okay. Yes, I get to edit. Um, oh, now I know that I can say what the hell I like. Um, so I, I think it does help, you know, being able to front something and, and mm. not, particularly with this kind of music, there's a certain element of, of kind of romance or romantic kind mm. of, mm. yeah, romantic noodlings. And, um, and also it's kind of got a sexiness about it, hopefully, our music. Mm. Then if you start turning into Mark Knopfler, um, <laughs> it's a really lesson. Yeah. come across that one. <laughs> Yes, true, but I mean, I mean, you're three years short, really, um, of uh, you know being, uh, you know, offered a spot at the ro in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and you know you you. Oh, you have to be twenty five years. Twenty five years, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, well, but what we have nine years off, will that count? I think I so. Think I don't know. I think it would. I mean, look, I mean, if it's good enough for Aerosmith, it's good enough for you. You know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, you, I mean, you, you did phenomenal stuff, as you said, with Echo. That, I mean, to this day, you can listen to, you know, you can listen to Crocodiles, and it still sort of fits, um, and it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't feel like it, it, you know, um, that it was, it was done when it was done. Um, I mean, you did Electrofiction, you did your solo album. Yeah. Um, you did all of those things, and you've insisted on, on doing, you know, on doing things your way. I mean, to the point that yeah. cooking vinyl were smart enough to, yeah, you know, to, to license the album. Um, but as I said, it, it's been you, you've had a phenomenal career up till now. Um, does it does it feel like you've sort of come, you know, that you that, that this is sort of a new, a new extension? It does, yeah. I mean, that's kind of I think the way. The way that chips have always fallen for us is that we've had to carve something new out of, you know, me and mine and Will's raw mm. tools or talents or whatever it is. Mm. And it's been, a, it's still an ongoing great journey. It's like, mm. it's like we still haven't peaked, mm. I think. Mm. Mm. Or if we have, you know, we've hit a, a trough maybe every now and then and then we can peak again. I think mm. it's, mm. I think it's just been a very interesting road that we've travelled and it's still out there, you know, mm. I think mm. it, it, it's been, it, that's what it's all about, you know, you can't, I, I, I don't know, I just think it's, that's, for me, it's enjoyable as the, the great successes are the kind of little avenues we've gone off in, you know, mm. and mm. sometimes we've hit a cul-de-sac but we've always managed to get out of the kind mm. of sharpest mm. and, mm. and it's, I just think it's, I was always in this for the long, mm. long time, you know, the long time. Yeah, uh, long haul. Yeah, mm. I, the haul makes it sound too much <laughs> like hard work. <laughs> but, um, you know, and I, I haven't enjoyed every minute, but I've enjoyed most of them. Sure, sure. And I mean, you've seen a lot of bands come and go. Um, you've seen a lot of uh, music styles come and go. And you've never been one to sort of hop on to, I mean, you've you've created almost sub-genres of music with Echo and the Bunny, I mean, you've never sort of latched on to something that was topical at the time and, you know, milked it for everything. Well, no, I th yeah, because I think, I mean, our, our kind of role models, if you can call them that, were the Velvet Underground mm. and maybe the Doors slightly, so it was always a case of knowing that we were going to be in a class of one, really, you yeah. know, and we always felt that maybe, even at the time that we were, go you know, the early 80s, when we were creating that, our own sound. Mm. It was being kind of, let's say, um, tapped into by other kind of peers of mm. ours, mm. And, um, or contemporaries, I hate to call them peers. They were <laughs> They're not deserving of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and even and now, you know, you hear it in bands that have come through in the 90s, you know, mm. I'm constantly being told that such and such a band sounds exactly like the Bunny Man. And, mm. Mm. You know, and sometimes I can see that and sometimes I can't. I think, I think that's no bad thing. Mm. I'm, there's very, I haven't had any total rip-offs of us, but mm. if people have kind of maybe grown up with our stuff or have suddenly discovered it and mm. it, it comes out in their music, I'm fine, you know. Mm. We, we kind of made no bones about the fact that we were heavily influenced by the Velvets. Mm, mm, mm. And even, you know, we'd write songs that we thought were very Velvet Underground mm. sounding. Mm. And it, was not, it was nothing like the Velvets. No. But, you know, because people, we'd always be writing these songs thinking, God, it's really Velvets. And then the reviews would <laughs> come out and say it sounded like the Doors. <laughs> okay. Which I thought was, you know... <laughs> A nice irony. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. But obviously, um, I mean, if you just take, um, I mean, flowers to me, it, it's. I don't think you've ever done downbeat, but I mean, most of your stuff is. Uh, I mean, it, th this album seems quite light and easy. You know, easy for you know, easily accessible. Um, yeah. Which I think is important. You know, for it because mm. I mean, there's there's literally probably two generations that may not be privy. To you know, to, to your history, and would pick yeah. it up as your first album, and go, I really like this, you know, and then realize yeah, that they're going to have yeah. to have to work nights to you know get your back catalog. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's it's funny because I, the fact that it is a lot more kind of 
accessible this album than the last one certainly mm. Mm. It's, it just reflects the kind of mood we're in and that I'm in lyrically you know there's there's more kind of not throwaway but tongue in cheek stuff mm-hmm. on this album which mm. it certainly wasn't on the last because I didn't I wasn't in that frame of mind mm. and I, I like that about the bunny man that we've never we've never gone to the, the cupboard of rock and roll mm. kind of cliches that are handy for bands you know mm. Mm. it's always been basically a, a mirror of what we're going through at the time which is nice for you I'm sure when you look at your catalogue and you you can almost document your life by the albums that you've released yeah mm. yeah it's, it is it's like a diary you know mm. Mm. The, the, there's tried to be as honest as it, as it can be when you're singing you know rock and roll true true and I think what's interesting as well is, um, I mean, most British bands try and break America, but, and a lot of American bands try and break into Europe and into the UK. Your success is... We're still trying to break Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to convince everyone that the Beatles have broken up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but I mean, it's funny because um, bands like The Cure, and I mean, bands that you were playing with in the 80s, um, were, were playing around you know, at the time that you yeah. were... Um, Depeche Mode, all of those sort of bands, um, their success also came late in the sense that yeah. you sort of had this underground following in you know in America, which um, probably more so in some you know in some instances than you do in you know in in Liverpool. Yeah, you know, which I is, mean Liverpool is a strong old followers, but America's been pretty much the constant, you know, mm. throughout the whole twenty year period. It's it's the place that we're going to be playing more this year, not to crack it, but just because. You know the fans are out there, and, sure. and it's a great place to tour. Sure, um, because that's never seemed to have been the t- intent, really. T- you know, when I look at that kind no, of element. No, we always, when every, when all the other bands, we're now doing it because we like playing there. And at the time, when we were being told do three month tours and you'll crack it, mm. well, no, we we really we didn't enjoy it as enough to do to do that much mm. touring mm. and the, the way we're doing it this time if we do do three months it'll be over a year yeah earlier. it won't be yeah three months at a time you know mm. um you know if we'd have done it then we'd have been massive but it massive doesn't mm. i like being the underdog mm. always did you know well i mean it's, um, it's nice in a way because then you don't i mean then it still allows you to do what you want to do without sort of you know getting back to that whole yeah, I mean, if you set your stall out by saying we're not that kind of band, mm. you know, eventually people will back off and stop trying to mould you into this. You know, mm. Stadium Rock was the place that mm. if any band was capable of, of, you know, playing stadiums and stuff mm. and, and getting everyone in there to feel like they weren't in a horrible big venue, mm. it was us, but... It just it just seemed so pat. Everyone was doing it, and kind of it was. It just didn't seem to be part of our agenda, you know. Mm. I'm certainly born again Christianity had no mm. no place mm. in our. Mm. You know, I, I wasn't against anything like that. We weren't born again saying this, but no, no. It just seemed a bit. Everyone was doing what they had to do to get on, and we did the opposite. We did yeah. everything we could do to get off. But then that's, I think that's where the respect comes in because it's a fact that, yeah. you know, that's why I think you have the longevity because the songs have weight. You have weight because you haven't compromised yourselves, you know. I need to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Only you, half a stone. <laughs> you're going to be, um, you, you've got some London dates coming up. Um, yeah. Looking forward to that? Yeah, big time. Mm. Um, and then after, we're, it's only a small British tour thing, so seven days, and then we go to Europe for three weeks. Right. Then America for July, then Japan, then Australia, then the Far East. This talk was coming to South of, South Africa at some point. That would be smashing. Oh, I'd love to. Smashing, mm. what a great word. <laughs> I could die then, you know. Uh, <laughs> Afterwards, not before. No. no. Have you ever seen us? I have not. I have not. Ah, uh, well, if, just for you. Yes, please. The, Come the, on, yeah. The kind of please, Jason. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, and I know that you've got a, a quite a busy schedule this morning, so I think I should um, probably say 
my goodbyes as much as I'd love to chat them. Because um, I think you've got a list well, of very considerate of you. You don't get that very often. Great, but um, thank you um, very much. It's been an absolute honour actually speaking well, to you. Well, uh, their pleasure is better than an honour. I'm just a, a normal bloke from outer space. But you make great music, and that's what's important. Oh, thank you. And you, you're very nice to have a conversation with. And that's what this feels like it's been, rather than question and answer thing. Well, if you could put some pressure on me, if you know any promoters out there, I that do. I you do. Think would, well, that'd be great. Yeah, and because we actually bought out. Just is the, Pardon? Sorry, we actually brought out um, one of your bandmates. We brought out the Violent Femmes last year. Oh, brilliant. So, um, it's... Well, maybe suggest... Because mm. our agent is the agency. Right. It's Neil Warnock at the agency. So if you mention mention that... Right. And they can go, you know, let's, let's get down there. Mm -hmm. What's Neil's surname? Warnock. Warnock. Okay, got that. Now, I'll, pass that, right. I'll, I'll definitely pass that on to the label and I'll push from my side. All oh, right, brilliant, Jason. But and hopefully I'll see it in South Africa. Yes, and enjoy it. As I say, and thanks so much for your time. Well, thank you. Take care. Cheers. Bye now. Bye.